just got done putting fuel in the combine. This is going to be our probably our final day of harvest, if not uh, one more after this. Well, let's get started on this field. What the hell? That's six year old doesn't have a carrier bearing in the middle. Uh oh. This is a 2014 612C with roll cones on the ends, opposed stock knives, and yield 360 broom chains. This head just became available. They had purchased it to get through their season, and their new head finally arrived, so I was able to get my hands on this one. And we're just using it to run off our last few acres. It is losing a little bit of corn, I'd say a third of a bushel is an acre, uh, where our six-year-old wasn't losing any because of the rebuild work we've done to it. So that's an indicator that this head will be getting rebuilt, and you guys will just have to stay tuned for that. The right flight has a pretty good dent on the auger, and it has these roller cones on the ends. I kind of like the way they throw everything in. Anything hangs over, they throw it in. But I don't like how they're heavy, and it makes that end snout hard to ride up and down. So the roller cones are going to be coming off. I'm taking them back to the dealer, and in exchange, they're going to give me a new auger. We'll have to put it in ourselves, but they're going to give me a new auger. As for the broom chains, I like them and I hate them. Uh, they are aggressive, I'll give them that. They're very aggressive, but they are high wear. Um, if they would last longer, I would be all for them. They cushion the ears as it comes down through the plates. They're quieter and they're aggressive. Uh, nothing escapes them. But they lose efficiency as they wear out. So as they wear and wear apart, because when they're when they're new, they're in mesh. And as they wear and wear apart, which these are starting to get a pretty good gap in them, they start to lose efficiency. Then you replace your your brooms. You can keep the chains, but you replace the little plastic insert with the broom. What I don't like about them is they're high priced and the amount of wear time you get for your your money. I feel like. All you're really doing is benefiting the old 360 company and not actually putting it in your pocketbook. Because if you replace them at the time they need to replace, the amount of grain they save, it basically pays for what they cost. I'm gonna run down here and finish out the west side of the hill. It's 9.30 new time, 10.30 old time, about 11 o'clock. My stomach starts growling and I keep thinking it's lunch, but that time change just really messes me. It makes me wake up odd, it throws my lunch cycles off, and you finally get adjusted to it and it becomes normal and it changes again. After performing some software updates and performance tunings, the combine's working better than it has all season. Really as a whole, the harvest has went pretty smooth with the exception of rain delays in late October, which was record setting amounts of water. But we were dry, so that water has since soaked away. And then setting up our fields good for next year. Besides harvest, some guys in our area have started on fall fertilizer, including in hydrous ammonia application, which means our soil temps are cooling off to where it's conducive for fall applied in nitrogen. On our farm, we have some fall tillage, dozer work, and a host of things to do in the hopes that the weather holds and continues to be nice for the next week or so so we can get some of those activities flowing. The 6th and 7th were very warm, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, which doesn't get much nicer than that for this time of year. But we're hoping that we can catch some days of equal or at least over 50 degrees to uh, have a nice enjoyable time of blowing the combine off and the headers off and cleaning everything up. That's one of the worst jobs for the year is cleaning in the machine up, but it has to be done. But for now we can talk about the header. The header has knife to knife rolls. It's an opposed to knife roll. I'm actually pretty happy with the job that they're doing cutting. I don't think they work all that well in green standing stocks. I'll have more information on that in an upcoming video. And we're back from lunch. We're gonna start on the final farm here. Right here we're negotiating some pretty tough contour terraces. If you don't know what contour terrace is, it's a terrace that lays with the contour of the ground. 
uh, just a minimal amount of slope and they always empty out into a waterway. As you can see the waterway here goes down to the field. They're not made to contain water for tile lines. And here we'll cross the waterway. This is where the terrace is outlet. They taper in, taper in. You can see the four of them here. Contour terraces were used many years ago. Uh, probably these went in the 60s is what we're thinking. And by the mid 70s, you started seeing bench terraces. The 80s contours were completely gone. You see bench terraces, and then those subsided to what we now use as a narrow base, uh, which is double grass slopes. Uh, much easier to farm around. When you get machinery like we have modern day, such as this 12 row head, we're on the back slope now, and the soybeans there were the front slope. If you had 6620 with a 40 wide head, it would be fairly easy to, to get navigate these slopes. But with a 30 foot wide head, you got about 12 to 13 foot cut there, and you got a pretty good swale. It's just real difficult to uh, use this bigger, newer equipment on these old terraces. Now, there is a company called Split Flex Technologies. Split Flex takes any brand of header and they put a hinge in the middle so this head would smile or frown meaning bow up or bow down out of the center uh, basically becomes a flexible corn head with two six rows two things i don't like about a split flex head the first thing is they run off of true sight sensors header sensors they have i think five sensors and you have to box in your cab to control the uh, sensors that crosses it over to the actual header control. The number two thing I do not like about a split flex head is the way they cut the flights back in the center so they can put a U joint in there for a pivots. And when they cut that flight back and they're piling everything up the center where they don't really have a way to throw it in very well, it leads to fluffing issues. Fluffing is a term. Well, it's a term in several movies, but it's a term that uh, in corn heads where it just won't feed. It just piles up with all the shucks and anything loose material and just builds up. It's a, like a big bridging effect. And this header is a fixed frame head, meaning it does not fold. They do have folding versions of this header. I cannot afford one of those. Those are going to be in the 80000 or range uh, with wear on them. Uh, in new, you're looking at uh, 150,000 or more. Down here we have uh, two rail cars welded together. Those are nine foot diameter tubes and they're going to be bringing in another one just like that. There's a 299D. Over there is a excavator. I believe it's a 324. You can see the road close signs are at and they piled the debris right there. Needs to be a wooden bridge across that ditch. And that ditch carries a lot of water. That the bridge, wood bridge, was shot. So the county is never going to replace it with two side by side, nine foot tubes. Those will both have concrete collars on them, which is good. Now we'll be able to go across that ditch, get to the other side of this farm. This grass here we do not farm because it's wet, and it's wet right now as we're combining. Uh, I can feel it pretty soft and mushy under the machine. If it had some strips of tile through here, we could farm and clear out there to the road. Uh, that's being done by the county department. We'll see what kind of job they do on that project. And that's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. You can sink something very quickly. Uh, luckily, we were able just to give it a quick tug. Came right out, little to no effort. Always pays to stop before you you get in very deep. The minute you start to spin, just stop. That area of the field's always wet. That particular spot has never been that wet before, and it was literally I thought I broke a final drive off. It was just boom. So the other three tires are up on solid surface. Uh, no harm, no foul. Again, the second the detective is off, a uh, good time to stop, and then your recovery is super easy. It took longer to go get the chain than it did to pull it out. I need to run the Hedor 410. 
back to the farm. Then I gotta get my pickup and go meet with my dad and help move help move the auger again. It'll be our final move. We won't get done here today, we'll finish out tomorrow. And that'll be it for Harvest 2021. And thank you guys for coming along for the ride. Moving an auger at night. Oh, what's more fun than that? Check out that sunset. And back to the combine. Who else listens to Fallout Boy? Light him up. Those lights made a lot of difference this year. That is a big head. When you look out your door to see the left side, it's just a large swath of corn uh, coming into the machine. I'm going to stay here and pick until the grain cart's full, maybe leave the combine full overnight, and then try to get a good jump on tomorrow so we can get finished up with harvest. And after that, we'll have a lot of good footage of other things coming up for the fall, so pending that the weather holds. So stay tuned for all those videos and more. And guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in uh, to watching these videos. Uh, the subscriber counts really went through the roof. It just amazes me how many people are interested in what we're doing on our operation. And I sincerely thank you for watching and we'll hopefully continue to build this channel. You guys can always tune into my other channel as well, which gives some behind the scenes as well as other styles of content. If you guys are a member of that other channel, you would have saw this head first on there. Farming has its challenges, but I really do enjoy what I'm doing in life. And I look forward to it. Not every day is a cake walk, but as an overall, I wouldn't trade it. Stay tuned for all the awesome things we got planned coming up. Appreciate you guys watching.